Good morning, I'm Grant Flora, and it's time for the Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. With me this morning is student Zach Bowen and boys head basketball coach John Everingham. And guys, it's been about two weeks since we've done this, uh, and in that time a lot's happened. We've had Christmas break, so coach, how was Christmas break? Oh, it was good for us, you know. I, uh, we took seven seven days off. Uh, sounds like a lot. We, we had a... Um, you know, we had a four-day stretch there, right? As Christmas, um, we, I, here at Wawa C, you know, we went up to uh, Thursday before Christmas, um, and Friday was a teacher day, so our, our kids went went to school up till Thursday. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Christmas on Sunday. Yes. Correct? Yeah. yeah. So we we were able to um, um, we were able to take about four days off there where we came back on Tuesday, I think, trying to get ready for the holiday tournament. And then after the holiday tournament, uh, which I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about, but we were able to um, uh, take three days off there. So seven total days over break that, that I think is going to help us, you know, down the stretch in terms of rest and making sure our guys are healthy. Man, we, I'm sure like everybody else, we, we battled some sickness that is still kind of with us, you know, um, um, we got Braden Pike and and Carson Smith and uh, Kane Dukes uh, that that all missed us either some practice time or some games due to due to the flu. Um, it, to be perfectly honest, at my house, you know, I got a few players living in my house. Um, they got the flu a bug just at the right time. It was over uh, the, our four day break, you know. So so sickness has kind of run through our program. We still got some guys recovering a bit from that. But it looks like we made it through the break, you know, kind of filtering through that stuff. I know a lot of teams are dealing with that type of stuff. So it was good for us to get rested, to get healthy. And I think, oh, gosh, heading into next week, I think we should be 100% healthy, no injuries. Um, um, we're still waiting for a, a doctor's appointment on January 18th with, with Nolan Holsworth. Uh, so we still got a couple weeks there. But for the most part, it was a great break for us. Uh, be able to get in the gym a little bit, play some games, and and uh, get healthy. Coach, to open up a thing about the holiday tourney, we were kind of talking about that a little bit. You touched up on it. Um, you opened up with Trinity in that holiday tournament, and that game went really good for you. I mean, it seemed like you were clicking on all cylinders. Defense was rolling good and offense was rolling good. What can you say about that? Yeah, we you know Trinity is a interesting school because nobody really knows about them. They're they're a small one A school um, that's new to the IHSAA. They're in a, uh, a conference with uh, I believe like Culver and Argus and and South Bend Career Academy. So there's some some of these new schools that are popping up, um, and uh, so uh, they had emailed us about uh, uh, playing in the holiday tournament, and they won 15 games last year. And so uh, without seeing them play, but knowing they're a 1A school, uh, we went ahead and decided to bring them in and, and uh, uh, play them. And so um, they did lose one of their best players to uh, the game of golf, actually. He's a really good golfer and, and uh, uh, decided to kind of focus on golf. So they, they were without their best player this season. Um, but what, what we really wanted to do is to, to really focus on ourselves during the holiday tournament. How are we going to get better? Um, I've mentioned a lot on the radio show about moving the basketball from side to side and and defensively staying solid. And so uh, the trap that you may fall into um, uh, sometimes against uh, some of these schools that come in that, that may not have had the success as some of these other, other teams that we're playing is to try to trap and gamble and, and get away from who you are. But we did a really, really good job of staying uh, true to who we are in that game. And so... I don't think we we called any sort of trapping or pressing, you know, defenses. We really thought about what's going to make us better, you know, throughout the season. I think we held them to 16 or 17 points uh, in the game. And so I was really proud of our guys uh, not to venture away and, and get excited about jumping through passing lanes or, or trying to get, you know, plays like that, that maybe we could get against that team, but maybe not against Woodland and, and Northwood and some of these other really good teams that we've been playing. So... Um, I was very pleased with the way we performed in the morning. Uh, we were able to get uh, different guys into the game and, and really try to get some experience for some of those guys on our bench. And at the same time, too, is something to talk about uh, is our JV was playing at the same time, you know, uh, sorry, not the same time, but the same day. And so we played at 10 o'clock against Trinity. 
and then we go across in the other gym and in our JV actually because Dream Trinity didn't have a JV team New Haven came in and uh, we were able to play them in, in the morning so and I believe that game went to overtime we had a 17 point lead and and it ended up going into overtime when they started pressing us. But so overall, in the morning time, it was a really good experience, uh, not only for our varsity guys, but our bench guys, and then also our JV and the other gym. Uh, overall, in the morning time, um, it was a really good experience for our guys. Yeah, Coach, obviously you got things rolling against Trinity. Then in that championship game, you took on Woodland. Woodland came in, I believe, as a two-loss team, uh, and it was a close matchup. You started out pretty well against Woodland, uh, so... Uh, what kind of got you out to that good start? How were you able to to get out early? Well, it seems like every team we play has got ten wins, you know, or they're ten and two, or yeah. nine and one, or you know, whatever. And um, I, I was talking to uh, you know uh, somebody I can't remember who it was, but uh, it was another coach I was talking to about. Um, you know, I I learned a long time ago that you know sometimes it, it's not you know your record. You know, a lot of people judge you on your record, and, and sometimes you can have a team that maybe is not as good as some of the teams that you've had in the past, but but the teams that you're playing are down. And, you know, my first year here, we started out 4-1. Um, uh, and one. It's probably the least talented team that I've had since I've been here at, at uh, Wawa C. And we started out 4-1, and one, you know, and it was just the fact that some other teams were down, you know, and they, they just weren't as good as we, we were, even though we weren't that good. This year, I feel like we got a really good basketball team, but we're running into other programs that are just on, on, on the kind of on highs, you know. And so you look at Manchester, and, and you, I keep looking at their scores. Last night they scored 97 points, um, and, and they're a good basketball team. And uh, West Noble, uh, Columbia City – and I'm sure I'm forgetting, you know, some along the way. But I think the point I'm trying to make is that we're just running into teams that, that are uh, talented. You know, they're they're on our schedule. We got one of the top, you know, uh, strength of schedules. You know, in Class Three A, um, and it's just the the fact that the teams that we're running into um, are good this year. And so, um, last year Woodland was good. This year Woodland's good. But in the past, maybe they've had some down teams or whatever. But uh, the Woodland team that we played in the holiday in the championship of the holiday tournament, um, they were they were a good basketball team. Coach, I look at these stats and I see you know like the normal scores they're still scoring like Z Bar at the Everingham Twins, but one player that's been sticking out to me here lately is Carson Smith and his production on the court. He keeps on coming off the bench and having amazing performances. What can you say about that? Yeah, he definitely is uh, a valuable asset to to what we're doing, especially on the offensive end. Um, he, he's improved so much since last year in terms of his um, ability to catch, pivot, and pass, you know, which is important. Um, his ability to drive and kick and break down defenses. And, and so um, he's been a valuable six man. He's a, he's a, he's a nice um, asset to have coming off the bench. Um, he has the ability to shoot and score. Um, he's, he's a good rebounder, you know, for us. He gets a, keeps a lot of plays alive, tipping that ball out. Um, and then his ability to find the open man, you know, is uh, something that's valuable to us. But look, there's no, there, there's it's no secret, you know, who our top players are, and, and everybody knows that. And other coaches are pretty good. So Carson and Peyton Felger, for example, are, are finding themselves with uh, lesser defenders, you know, on them. And so it's going to be important for those two guys. We've had a couple games where those guys, those guys have produced offensively, and it's been very beneficial to our team. And so. Um, we're going to have to continue to kind of give these guys the ball in the right positions where they can make plays as our other guys are really being locked down. You know, um, um, they're being physical with some of our top players and, and they're kind of getting into wrestling matches, which uh, if you come to our games, you can probably look and see that we probably wouldn't be real good at a MMA fight or a wrestling match. We're kind of skinny, you know, so we're skilled, but we're, but we're a little skinny. And so... Um, it's important for those guys, the Carson Smith and, and Peyton Felger and Darius Lewis as he comes in um, and plays a little more minutes to provide some offensive punch, you know, um, at, on the, that end of the floor. Yeah, Woodland brought good intensity, you know, by that second quarter and second half. And, you know, you kept it close, and it was a pretty good battle through to the end. Uh, but kind of what kind of went wrong? You know, they, they brought some pressure. Uh, they have length. Another one of those teams that have length. 
uh, and can really cause some problems. So what kind of went wrong toward the end? Yeah, they we did pretty good. You know, we got off to us. I think at the end of the first quarter, sixteen to six. You know, I looked up in the middle of the second quarter, and we're still up eight points. You know, it was like maybe twenty three to fifteen or whatever. They went on a little bit of a run, and I think uh, Coach Baker, I know him very well. I've coached against him for many, many years. But, uh, um, you know, he called timeout, and, and I, I kind of sensed that, you know, they were going to ramp up the intensity defensively, and that's what they did. It's just on-the-ball defense that, that is giving us problems right now, whether it be, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but last night at Northwood. And, and then basically for two and a half quarters against Woodland, they they just on the ball, they were just hounding us, you know. And so it's important for us to kind of find ways to um, make better cuts, better back cuts, and, and get the ball inside, you know. And so if, we're, if our guards are being pressured so much on the exterior um, that we, we have the ability to get the ball on the inside and score on the inside. So it could open up some opportunities for um, some other guys on the inside, but – you got to give credit to Woodland. They they made a switch. They made a change. They came with some pressure um, that affected our ball handlers, and and uh, uh, we didn't handle that very well. We no longer in the second half got uh, open outside shots like we were getting in the first half. But we hung in there and we battled against a really good basketball team. Again, like I was saying earlier, they're they're good. You know, they're athletic. They're senior laden team, and and uh, it's another team that we ran into that um, um, that's just good. You know, and so. Uh, we lost to them in overtime last year, and then this year, you know, we get to the championship game and, and lost to them where we feel like if we could make a few plays here or there, we, we probably would have handled them. But um, that's just kind of how it's going for us this year so far. Coach, I'd like to point out that first and second quarter of that Woodland game. It was – Woodland had six points in that first quarter, whereas you guys had 16 points. And then in that second quarter, Woodland had 19 points, where you guys had nine points. So those first two quarters – we're just back and forth action nonstop. Yeah. So what can you say about your boys hanging in there and playing in that first we're, two quarters? You know, that first quarter, we got, we got uh, a lot of deflections, and we were very active defensively. And we talk a lot about offense because that's what most people notice. But defensively, it was probably our best quarter of the year against a good basketball team to hold them to six points. And, and to tell you the truth, they scored some points in transition, and our intensity kind of – uh, waned from that first quarter. We just quite we couldn't quite sustain the energy level on defense as theirs picked up. Ours kind of went the the opposite direction. So the good news is, I thought we had a quarter, maybe a quarter and a half, where we played pretty good defense. You know, we were on it, and and so we just got to find a way to do one of two things. We got to reduce possessions to figure out if we can defend forty possessions. Or we have to sustain that energy level for a longer period of time uh, and maybe play some more guys, you know. So um, it's something that we're working towards, and we don't. Ha there's not a lot of wiggle room when you're playing good teams. It's not like you can experiment, you know, a whole lot. Um, but our guys are working hard in practice, and, and we've been very competitive against some really good teams. Uh, and so I was proud of our guys for, for, that, for their effort, you know, in the holiday tournament. Yeah, and you can't forget that was uh, – Two games in one day sort of deal. So that Woodland game was the night game. Trinity was the morning game. Uh, so definitely a good performance and a good um, tournament over break to have. So that concludes our recap of the holiday tournament coming up. We'll discuss last night's Northwood matchup. More Coach's Corner Basketball show coming up on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. Welcome back to the Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. It's Grant Floor with Zach Bowen and Coach John Everingham, and it's time to discuss our recap of Northwood last night. Coach, to start off, Northwood was ranked number 12 in the IBCA poll, yeah. which was regardless of class in the state of Indiana. They were ranked, I believe, second in 3A in the AP poll behind Mishawaka Marion. Uh, and they showed why last night. Just a really solid team, loaded with talent. Um, what was it like to play Northwood last night? Well, it was kind of cool. You know the environment. Uh, you know, when you're good, people will come watch. And, and uh, there, there were a lot of people there last night. And, and uh, it, it was good for us. You know, I mean, I, I really felt confident that, that it was going to be a great experience for us to go in there and play against you know, Northwood. We're, we're used to playing them. Um, but they're a different team this year. And, and uh just talking to some Northwood people, and, and uh, um, 
you know the 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 younger Roush, the 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 sophomore Roush. You know he he adds a different element that they didn't have last maybe the last couple of years where um, they got Brenner, they got Ian Roush, and and um, they got some other pretty good players and Bond Treger and all that stuff. But they didn't have that second you know six seven six eight guy inside and 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 that creates real problems on the interior when you got two two big boys down there like that. And uh, uh, defensively, it allows Roush to kind of come out, Ian Roush to come out on the perimeter and play the defense. He, he's he got really good lateral movement, uh, Ian Roush does, and he gave problems. He was guarding uh, Miles all night, and he just couldn't get around him. I think he held him scoreless, you know, for the game. And, and uh, you know, what Miles has to understand is that he's not the first one, you know, and, and we as a team, we're not the first one. And I thought something interesting to – Mention on on the radio it might take a minute if you guys can bear with me, but um, Northwood is good. They're really good, and and um, um, it's going to be up to us to to kind of figure out what types of things we might be able to do against them to cause them some sort of problems in in the sectional play. But um, we got a ways to go before we get there. But um, you know, you take away they they go down to the Hall of Fame Classic. That that is the most that's the highest honor that you can get as a team. Uh, to be invited to go to the Hall of Fame Classic. That's like the four best teams in the state of Indiana get to go to uh, Newcastle to play in that tournament. And they go down there, and I think they played number two, North Davies, and they beat them uh, 58-53. And then they play the big, bad Ben Davis Giants. And um, I think they had a a one-point lead at halftime, and and so they obviously can compete at a high level there. But you take away those two games at the Hall of Fame Classic – Listen to some of these scores, um, and, and this will tell you how impressive Northwood is playing right now and how good they are. But um, these are some some pretty good teams too. By the way, Lakeland, um, who's having a, a pretty good season so far, they get beat by 37 points. Fort Wayne Concordia, uh, their second game of the year, uh, they're ranked, I think, either 10th or 12th in Class 3A. When I saw this score, I thought, oh, boy. Uh, they beat them by 39 points. Uh, Triton. Uh, 38. I'll quickly try to do the math in in my head here. Uh, Westview 28, Fairfield 40, uh, Jimtown 38 points, uh, Plymouth 24, uh, Columbia City, who we know is a good basketball team, beat them by 26, and then they beat us by 30 or whatever, right? And so they're playing some some good teams just like we are, and they are absolutely smoking them. I mean, just blowing them out in. And so we think we got a pretty good basketball team, and it was very difficult for us to score. And so um, I, I don't think, you know, you can talk about it in the locker room to, to your team, but until you actually go experience what it's like to play against a really good basketball team, um, it, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. We know now. We got it. We know what we have to do, and we'll, we'll put some things up on the board, and we'll try to pluck those off, you know, as we go throughout the season. Coach, you're talking about the experience there. So, what type of experience does playing a team like Northwood give your team? Yeah, I think it's I think it's the the physical presence and and just their overall athleticism and length. You know, our our ability to you know we come out early in the game. It probably was pretty obvious what we were trying to do. We got a moving screen, which you know uh, I, I wish we wouldn't have done there. But we tried to control the tempo early. We did get. Uh, we came out in a, a zone that we hadn't played all year um, just because we knew we were pretty much underdogs. Um, but we, we we got two of the first three possessions on defense. We got stops and rebounds. And so uh, we go down in the offensive end, and, and um, um, you know, we didn't capitalize on those first three possessions to kind of try to keep that game kind of closer than, than what it was. But um, I think, guys, as, as we start to input, you know, some game plans and, and some things, now we can kind of refer back to – this is what we're going to have to do. This is how we're going to get. We're going to have to get better in order to compete at a higher level. But you can pick out some things in, in throughout that game. You know, on the on both ends of the floor, where I thought we did a pretty good job. But you cannot think that you're going to go into that lane and uh, uh, try to shoot. Period, without without getting your shot blocked. And so those guys are really good at at coming over and blocking shots. And you have to be able to get the ball in the lane and then kick it out. Maybe one extra pass to get some open shots on the outside which we did on a couple occasions. But then when you get open shots, sometimes you feel rushed, like those guys are coming at you a little faster than, than maybe what we're used to. And so um, those are experiences that you have to have. Um, if, if you want to compete at that level, you have to have those experiences, and then you have to look back and say, okay, what do we need to do to get better in order to compete at that level? 
Yeah, Coach, kind of like you were saying, Northwood is 10-2 and two right now, the record, and nine of those 10 wins have come by at least 24 points. Uh, that's just crazy, and like you said, you mentioned some of the teams they've played, you know, like Fairfield, Columbia City, both teams that were able to beat you in a close game, and they just, you know, they couldn't do anything against Northwood either. Um, and then, of course, the one win that didn't fall into that category was against North Davies in that uh, Hall of Fame Classic. So, kind of Northwood, they bring a lot of length. Uh, defensively, they were really strong, like you were saying. Um, and, of course, when you have Ian Rosh and Tyler Rosh with the height and length, like you said, that poses a lot of problems. What was Northwood able to do on the defensive end, specifically that just kind of kept you out of the paint and just uh, kept all those openings closed? Well, it's their, their lateral movement, their best defenders. You know, Brenner's not one of their best defenders. Uh, Wolf's not one of their best defenders. But when they are able to lock down, like, two or three guys, you know, Bontrager and Ian Roush, you know, were able to lock down, you know, Miles and Maddox. And I think three total points between them and, and Miles was held scoreless, like I, like I said. Um, you know, when they are able to lock down and really, really make it hard for your best players to score – um, that it just puts a lot of pressure on other guys to do, do some things. You know, we, we were without, for the most part, without Carson Smith last night. Um, so he's a guy that can come in and maybe score for us a little bit. You know, Felger goes 0 for 4, you know, from the field. Um, I thought Colin Zebarth showed that he did some nice things. You know, he made a uh, pull-up jumper there. He scored 10 points for us, and, and that's what we need him to do. If other guys are being on the lockdown, you know, for, for, for us to really be good, we got to have multiple options where if you're going to take one or two guys away, you know, the some of the other guys got to step up and, and, and score points for us. But their their ability, their lateral movement, you know, is is what causes the most problem. And I'll be honest with you, the, the you know, I don't care. I, I know West Noble's good. Um, you know, Fairfield has shown some signs of of being able to, to compete, but – we're all in big trouble, like big trouble. Um, these guys are really good. And so I've seen, um, you know, when I was at DeKalb, I played against uh, a team that went to the state finals uh, in Fort Wayne Snyder and just barely lost. And and as a t- t- tiny side note, I got a, a chance to talk to Coach Sims. You guys should ask me about going to the IPFW game, uh, watching uh, Keaton's team play a little bit. But at the IPFW game, um, I was able to talk to Coach Sims about his run, you know, the state championship. But we met them in the state uh, in the sectional championship game, and you could just tell they they were at a completely different level, and they were destined to you know to to play in a, to compete for the state championship. I played against uh, Homestead when I was at DeKalb um, when they went to the when they had uh, Biggie, uh, they went to the state championship game and won. You know, they won a state championship. We were able to compete against them that year, and actually Biggie hit a fadeaway three to beat us in the corner there. But uh, I really want to talk just a little bit about that because that, that team beat us by 37 points in the holiday tournament. Homestead beat DeKalb, the team that I was coaching, 37 points. Wow. And I'm good friends with the Homestead coach. And um, he said, no, nope, no, nope, you're not fooling me one bit. He goes, if we play you guys in two weeks. I know what it's, I know what it's going to be like, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, whatever. Well, we did. We lost by three, you know. And so those are things I'm talking to these guys about. You know, Warsaw or uh, uh, Northwood got us, right? The hope is that we can take a look at some things and say, okay, th- we can't, you can't do these things and, and expect to win. It's the same thing that I've been through multiple times. You know, when I was at Argus, my first coaching stop, uh, we played against uh, Oregon Davis, who won back-to-back state championships. Guess what sectional they were in? They were in our sectional, and we had to compete against them. We were up 17-13 to at halftime, you know, against Oregon Davis. But you can just tell, those types of teams, and I'm putting Northwood in that category, look – Coach Wolf is thinking about and talking about to his players what it's going to take to win a state championship in Class 3A. Okay, And everybody's starting to realize these guys are legit. They are the real deal. And so um, that does not mean they can't get upset. And and we only got to beat them one time. Wes Noble only got to beat them one time. And we have some talent. We have some skill. And so does Wes Noble. And... Uh, um, you know, Lakeland's got a couple kids that, that can score too. So what I'm getting at, the point that I'm getting at is that these guys are for real. And and we we are going to have to figure it out. 
West Noble's going to have to figure it out. But we're all in big trouble. Big trouble. You know, they got real dudes down there at, over there in Northwood. And, man, it's, it's, uh, it's fun to compete against that and also try to figure it out, which we're all trying to do. Coach, um, this is kind of touching up on if you do meet them in sectional time. You know, you've already seen them and kind of seen what Northwood kind of has. But I would also want to touch up on you've played most of the sectional teams now except for one, and I do believe that's Lakeland. So what can you say? Does this help you prepare for that sectional time? Like what, you know, playing most of the teams, so how does that prepare you for sectional time? Well, it puts something up on the wall, you know, something to shoot for, you know, your goals. And so when you're in practice every day, you're thinking, well, if you guys really want to compete at this level, then this is what we're going to have to do. And I've mentioned that several times this morning about, you know, b- being a, you know, you, you put something up there and then you shoot for it. You know, you set your goals and you set your goals pretty high. Our goal is to beat Northwood. It has been since we lost to them as sectional championship last year. And so... Uh, we gave them heck last year, but I'll tell you one thing they didn't have was Tyler Roush. You know, that big six seven, you know, kid underneath, the way he blocks shots, the way he finishes at the basket, he adds a whole new element, element you know, to their team. And so we can figure it out. I can tell you that. Again, I've competed against what I mentioned, Oregon Davis, state champion, um, uh, Homestead, state champion, Fort Wayne Snyder, state runner-up. I've actually been in those these situations before, so it's going to be important for me to pull upon my experience as a head coach and say, okay, I've done it one time, I've done it twice, I've done it three times as a coach. How can I get that message across to the kids that we have here in our locker room today at Wawasi in order to compete at that level? And here's what I can tell you. I know we're running out of time in this segment, right? But here's what I can tell you. We actually can do it. And so now that sounds totally crazy after getting beat by 87 points or whatever it was (laughs) last night. But I'm telling you, we got the guys that can do it. And so I think our locker room believes. I told you last night we're in a good place. It's because we actually believe. Now we got the experience. Now we got to start shooting for something that we can we can actually accomplish. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, and coach, you've talked about in some of these shows before. Uh, you know, last year at sectional time, you played Lakeland in the semifinal, a team I believe you lost to in the regular season. Avenged that loss in the sectional, Finch. and then competed really tough against Northwood uh, to you know battle for that sectional title. So it. Certainly can be done. Uh, I've done it before, and uh, it's kind of just how it's going to go. So hopefully, uh, coming down the stretch, we'll be able to see some of that happen. All right. So that kind of concludes our recap of Northwood. Coming up, we're going to talk about Homestead tonight, another big-time matchup. Uh, So don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. Welcome back to the Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. It's Grant Floor with Zach Bowen and Coach John Everingham, and it's time to discuss our preview of Homestead. Tonight's a big one, Coach. Uh, Homestead, like we mentioned, ranked top five across the state with the IBCA poll and obviously the AP poll for Class 4A. Uh, monster team going into Homestead tonight. Uh, what's going on with that matchup? Well, you guys you guys got me all worked up over off air, right? You guys get me. You know, you're laughing because you know I'm all worked up now over the subject matter in between segments, right? That, that would be an interesting show if we could just uh, uh, record those conversations in between the actual takes. But now you guys got me worked up. Now we're talking about Homestead, right? Yes. Is that yeah. what we're talking about? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, what did you say about Homestead? Well, I'm, I'm still upset about that subject matter that we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, we can't talk about it, I understand, but uh, um, you know, there, there are things that happen throughout the season that, uh, uh, that just happen, you know, and so um, um, we're, we're, we'll move on from that. But Homestead is, uh, Homestead is a good team. I mean, we got Northwood last night that uh, – um, you might be surprised at some of the things I'm going to talk about this segment. Now that you got my uh, blood uh, pumping, <laughs> uh, but you know what? They're ranked fifth, fourth, yeah. Four A. IBCA's got them fourth in the state, and A people has them fifth and four A. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I they lose. Let's talk about them last year. You know, uh, Homestead. I, I we should look real quick. I'll try to get it on my phone quickly, but. Uh, you know, Homestead had uh, the kid that's playing at lawyer. Yeah, Fletcher uh, Lawyer. Fletcher Lawyer is playing at uh, um, 
uh, a Purdue right now. As a matter of fact, you're yeah. wearing a Purdue. You probably like the way he plays. Yeah, I'm he's a, an amazing player. I'm a Fletcher lawyer fan now. <laughs> Huge. Everybody is. You know, he's from Indiana. He's from. Uh, I don't think he's originally from Indiana. I think he transferred in from out of state into into Homestead. I'll have to ask this, uh, Chris, uh, Coach Johnson tonight about about that. But um, you know, they they had a really good team last year. Obviously, he was a Mister Basketball candidate, if not Mister Basketball. I can't even remember, but. Um, he was either first or second in Mr. Basketball voting. Was he Mr. Basketball? Uh, I want to say it was Braden Smith from Westfield. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, definitely Fletcher was up there. Um, yeah, Fletcher and Braden were two of the top candidates. When do we get to talk about Purdue? <laughs> Can we talk about that right now? we got plenty of time, right? <laughs> so, do you like Purdue? you got Michigan. I mean, I'm, I'm a diehard Michigan fan. Michigan. So Purdue's that one team that I always Purdue. look at and I get scared of. In IU, I'm a I'm a big IU fan. Uh, so this this is going to be real interesting. Well, t- tell me about your Michigan uh, team. I I don't know much about Michigan. All right, so far this year, uh, they're they're a team. Like that's, that's okay. That's all, all right, them. okay, that's it. I mean, that what are they good? I don't know. They're, I actually they're don't. Meh. Know. They're they're meh. okay. They take on Michigan State tonight. So. Do they? Okay. Yeah. Do, 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 what's their biggest win? Have they had a big win this year? I'd say either. Penn State, I think Penn State's their biggest one so far. And yeah. Penn State's kind of been off and on, I think, in the Big yeah. Ten. Maryland, Maryland too. They beat Penn State yeah. in Maryland. So. Maryland, yeah. Yeah. Uh, d- d- Purdue's got a uh, Achilles heel in uh, who is that? Well, see, they got Fletcher Lawyer and Braden Smith. No, no, no. The, the, the team. The team. The team ah, that's got them. They see Rutgers. Rutgers has <laughs> uh, figured it out, right? Yeah. Because they beat them twice. Yeah, that's and, a... Crazy. I don't, I don't know what to say about that. Tell us about Purdue's team. For those maybe potentially listening, uh, that Purdue team is made up of, of a bunch of Indiana guys. Uh, oh, the yeah. kid from Blackhawk. Uh, Caleb First. Yeah, First. Uh, a great kid, by the way, um, and uh, an amazing player. Um, and, and he's a bench guy. Is yeah, that correct? Uh, sometimes. Yeah, I think he's been starting the last few games. Mason Gillis was out with some injury. Uh, but, yeah, Caleb First. Uh, he's, he's he's a sixth man for him probably usually, but then starts some games as well. Uh, but he's a he's a lengthy guy. You can tell that he's a good player, and he played at Blackhawk Christian. Yeah. Um, so he's from around here, and of course with Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer, both uh, freshmen, they played high school ball last year. Braden Smith played for Westfield, Fletcher Lawyer for Homestead, like we were talking about. So uh, lots of Indiana guys on Purdue's team. Yeah. And so, uh, the, the, and the, of course, the big kid, the seven foot four, yeah, kid, Zach Eady, Eady, yeah, and um, man, he's skilled, and uh, he's fun to watch. Mm-hmm. You know, and here's the thing: I will tell you, I I started my coaching career at Argus, and we were uh, black and gold, and it we're just like Argus is just close enough to in that direction where a lot of the Argus people, because we're we were black and gold, and and we we're far enough south that a lot of Purdue fans, you know, down there. And so um, I, but I was born and raised in the 80s and the 90s and Bob Knight era, era and Gene Cady, where, you know, Bob Knight had drilled into us IU fans that you hate Purdue. And, but it, Purdue was kind of like a rival, but in my mind, it wasn't a huge rivalry because IU'd seemed to beat them. You know, it's like they, I didn't think they were that good. So I was more concerned about, you know, the Michigan State and Michigan, you know, when they had the Fab Five and stuff like that. But things are beginning to shift, and what you're seeing is, um, in my opinion, right, and so I think it's okay to say my opinions, but, you know, Butler, uh, when they had uh, – what's the guy's name that plays in the pros now? Um, the, the, the kid that almost hit the half-court shot. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Gordon Hayward. Gordon, yeah, yeah, Hayward. Uh, when they had him and, and some of that – they had these Indiana boys that were going to Butler, and then Butler makes a run to the Final Four in the final game, and people started shifting. I, these IU fans started kind of rooting for Butler. Well, now it's kind of shifted to where, you know, some of these IU fans are like, well, these Indiana boys are going to Purdue, and I actually don't mind watching them play. They play hard. They play hard defensively, and they, they play a style that's fun to watch, you know, and it's hard not to like Matt Painter. Right, and so I'm in a quite a conundrum here, uh, sitting here as an IU fan because I love IU, I love their players, and and I like Coach Woodson too. But I'm having trouble hating Purdue. I still don't like much about Michigan, but uh, <laughs> I do enjoy watching uh, Purdue. I like watching those Indiana boys, and I like Coach Painter, and so 
Uh, I, I can promise you when Indiana, when IU and Purdue play, I'll be a one million percent on the IU side. But <laughs> outside of that, I like watching Purdue play, and I like the the way they play. But they do have that getting back to Homestead. They have Fletcher Lawyer. That's yes. his name, right? Uh, and he he's a really uh, good player. I mean, he's got a, this receding hairline. It looks like he's about thirty five <laughs> years old. Um, but he's he's a really good player, right? Last year when when Lawyer uh, was a senior, they were twenty two and six, and they won the sectional and lost to Westfield. Did you see that the other kid was from Westfield? Yeah, Braden Smith. Braden Smith was from Westfield, so they they lost. It was Lawyer versus uh, um, uh, Smith in the in the regionals, and so I'll bet that was packed. Yeah, and so anyway, I get a call from uh, uh, Coach Johnson. We go back a ways because of my. Uh, uh, because of me coaching at DeKalb, they were in our conference, and Homestead was in our conference. So I got to know uh, Coach Johnson pretty well. We went, we go to um, we go to conferences together, you know. So he's kind of a friend of mine. He's always keeping up with me and uh, certainly my family and and uh, our team, you know. And uh, the the moment I signed on to coach here at Wallace, he's like, "Oh, just put us on the schedule." <laughs> he's like, "Let's play, let's play," because he likes coming up to the lakes and stuff like that but i just said no 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 we're not playing you know you guys you got mr basketball candidate and so on and so forth but the last year he called and said all right as soon as fletcher's gone he's like would you consider playing us and i said i said we'll sign a two-year deal and uh as long as we get to play at home first that's this <laughs> year we're playing at home this year well as it turns out the girls got a home game tonight and so we have to go on the road to play homestead tonight but i think it's going to be a good um, the reason why I did it, and a lot of people have asked me this, is what, why would you schedule Homestead? Um, it, it's because of how good Northwood is. It's, it, it is. it is directly related to Northwood. And so if we want to figure out how to beat Northwood, we have to, we have to play better competition. And so if our goal is to beat Northwood, then we got to schedule some of these teams that, that play at a high level. And obviously Homestead, you know, being ranked in the top five in 4A, um, they're one of the best teams in the state. Um, that, that I figured, oh, what the heck, you know, let's go there and play a couple games, you know, or play a game, and and uh, they'll be at our place next year. And and so I think it's a good test for us. And, and again, you go a weekend with Northwood and Homestead, it's incredibly difficult to win. Um, but we're we're in a good place. I told you that last night. Our team is in a really good place in, in the locker room, how positive we are. We totally understand why we're doing this. And so – you got to give credit to our guys. Why are we doing this? You know, they're not asking me that because they actually know. They believe in what we're doing. They want to beat Northwood and they want to play at that high level. So they they're like, "Yeah, coach, let's go play." You know, and so um, here's the crazy thing. Didn't I tell you at the beginning of the segment I was going to say something crazy? <laughs> yeah. We can win tonight. We can. And so uh, that's something that that I think our guys actually believe. And 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 so uh, after our shoot around today. Um, they're going to believe it a little bit more. We can go over and compete. We we have to take last night's experience and get better, and I think we will. I really do. I think we will. Coach, so how do you think you can come out with a victory? Like, what's some things that you think you could come out with a victory on? Well, we we turned the ball over last night 14 times. Uh, we'll we'll have to handle the ball just a little bit better, but we we have to be more aggressive. We have to we we continue to get put back on our heels. You know, when teams pressure us, Woodland did it, Northwood did it, they came back and they put us on our heels. We have to be the aggressor and going to the basket and really making some things happen. And the measuring stick on that is how many free throws you shoot. And so can guys get to the line, you know, sometimes. And sometimes you get your shot blocked, right? And sometimes you go to the free throw line. And, and so we, we have yet to really turn the corner, and I mean turn the corner literally. When we're coming off our – our ball screens or our dribble handoff, we, we don't turn the corner and go directly to the basket. We just move the ball, you know, maybe to the wing. And so we got to turn the corner and, um, um, and, and get the ball into the paint. And so I think tonight what you're going to see is a little more aggression from us. Now, we might lose. The, 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 obviously, you know, we're picked to lose by 20 or 30, whatever. But I can tell you, I think we're going to be a little more aggressive tonight. Again, we're going to take a look at some things and say, okay, what's our goal tonight? Our goal is probably going to be to be a little more aggressive going to the basket and get the ball into the paint. And, and so that's a good starting spot. If we can get the ball to the paint and either get fouled or get our shots blocked, then we can start looking at, okay, who blocked our shot? Oh, somebody that's guarding somebody else? 
okay, now get the ball into the paint and kick it out to an open guy. And so I think that's the progression of how we're going to be able to to get some better looks against some really good teams. Now, we played some teams, maybe some lesser teams, where we get open looks and we look great, right? Bam, splash, scoring points. But teams start to figure out they better not let us do that. Now they're kind of coming up on us. So, so it's a good progression for us to figure it out. Yeah, Coach Homestead tonight, uh, well, they have about three guys averaging double figures on the season. Now you mentioned um, earlier off air, I believe, that uh, Grant Leeper is not going to be playing tonight for Homestead. He's a pretty big guy. Um, and again, he's a, he averages 10 points a game. So that's going to be uh, one area that could be different if he's not playing. But they still have two other guys that are averaging like 17 points a game and higher. So they got some talented players like you were talking about. How do you start to try and handle those guys? Well, I, I watched two of their games last night. Um, then I watched the same game this morning, uh, Fort Wayne South. And I watched Hamilton Southeast this morning. And I also watched uh, Mishawaka Marion. And so they're beating these teams. Again, they're, uh, Grant Leeper is, uh, man, dude, he's explosive, explosive. Like I'm talking about, he's six foot seven. He's a kid that could play in the NFL, I swear. Um, you know, he's, he's, at, uh, he's taking a visit to the Citadel. He's a Division I uh, tight end. And sometimes that happens. You know, I, I did talk to Coach Johnson on the phone, and it's just how it is. You know, he's a football player first. He's got an opportunity to play. You know, at the next level, Division One football, I think he's got an offer from Iowa. I was, when I was listening to their game, I, their kids were talking about that. But, um, you know, to be able to play at that level, sometimes you got to sacrifice, you know, some other activities that you're doing within your high school. And clearly, um, you know, he's a football player first, and he's going on a, a recruiting visit to the Citadel. I think it was planned, you know, well in advance or whatever. But um, it's good for us because we 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 don't have to face him in in a sense. I like to I like to face great players, and so I wish he was here, but he's not. Um, and so you know, number three, do you have their names? Will uh, kid number three, his name's Will or number twelve, three and twelve are their two leading scorers. And and uh, what do you got their names? So one of them's last name is Jameson. Yeah, Will Jameson. Yeah, Will Jameson, number, number three. Yeah, and the other one, I'm not. Exactly sure how to pronounce his last name. Something like what's his first name? Um getting that up right now. Caden or something. Yeah. Like that. I think so. It's like Kapuki or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah, Kapuki. I think it is that. So those two guys, uh, number three and number twelve, that's Jameson and Kapuki. Um, those guys can score. They're averaging uh, seventeen or eighteen points each. And so they're guards. Uh Kapuki is like six foot two. Um, a good looking player. He's an NAI player. I know there's gonna be some NAI coaches there tonight. Um, at the game, taking a look at, at, at those two guys. And so, um, you know, they got a Division One football player underneath, 6'7", and can jump out of the gym. I'm serious. He's explosive that we won't see tonight. But you can see why they're ranked, you know, where they're ranked in the top five. They got two guys averaging 18 points a game. That number three, uh, what's his name, Will something? Yeah, Will Jamison. Jamison, yeah. You can see Jamison has the ability to uh, get the ball to the basket. Um and, and also, he gets a lot of breakaway wide open layups because he's really quick. So he's about 5'10. He's super quick. Um, and so Kapuki is more their slasher 6'2. You know, he's, he's shooting 50 plus percent from three point range. So it's something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Um, but without Leaper in there, there's some things I think we, we can do. Um, and I, I'm, I know Coach Johnson well. I, I know that he's not going to take the time to listen to our, our little broadcast this morning so I can say whatever I want, so I think <laughs> we're good. To, but we're going to have to keep those guys in check, those two guys in check. And then they got a kid named Graber, number 30, um, that uh, uh, starts for him. And then uh, another guy, uh, number 14, Parent, um, that comes in off the bench uh, or starts for him. He, probably, he obviously will start tonight. Um, that, that are good players, but they're not good shooters, you know. So I saw Graber shoot one over the basket about three feet, and I don't think Parent shoots more than 15% from three, um, according to their broadcasters. So we got a couple guys that we got to keep in check, you know, from three point range. And, and then, um, you know, if we can rebound the basketball, I think we'll be able to handle the ball against them. All right. Well, that concluds our preview. Did we go of over? Homestead. Did we go over? We did go a little over. Oh, so. man. I'm talking way too much. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That concludes our uh, preview of Homestead coming up. We're going to discuss just some things around the conference in the sectional and may even talk a little bit about Mishawaka, which will be this coming Friday. Uh, we'll be back with more Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com.
Welcome back to the Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. It's Grant Flora and Zach Bowen with Coach John Everingham. Uh, and it's time to discuss just kind of what's going on around the area in basketball. And we may even talk a little bit about Mishawaka uh, coming up this Friday. Uh, but Coach, there have been a lot of NLC games going on recently uh, as we start to get into the thick of conference play. Uh, and as well as some games involved with the sectional coming up. So uh, kind of what sticks out to you uh, based on what you've seen so far? You know what sticks out to me is that we talk off air, okay? <laughs> and it's I said that if you're listening to the whole show today, okay, that's kind of the theme is you, you have to be curious about what we're talking about off air, right? And you were kind enough not to throw me under the bus <clears throat> last segment when I was talking about how interesting our conversations were, but I, now I'm here to throw you under the bus. Oh, boy. Yeah. So uh, anybody attend any uh, college games recently? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, what game did you see? Well, I was at Mackey Arena on Monday night, and uh, if anybody out there is a college basketball fan, I'm sure you've heard about what happened on Monday night, uh, Rutgers versus Purdue. Uh, it was a phenomenal game, actually. One of the loudest Mackey Arena's yeah. ever gotten, but... Uh, it didn't lead to a victory for Purdue. That's what I'm saying. It say. came down to the last possession, didn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was down to the last second. Uh, Rutgers made a three with about ten seconds to go to take the lead, uh, and then Purdue just couldn't get in a basket to go in that last ten seconds. But if you were really smart, you would have, you would have said something about IU uh, uh, giving yeah. up a seventeen point <laughs> lead to Iowa <laughs> and losing late. I didn't watch that game, but uh, anyway, how cool was it? Where were your seats? So we were up in, you know, some of those upper sections, but, uh, you know, I'm at Arena, and basically all the seats are yeah. pretty good, so uh, we could see well, and it was it was a really fun atmosphere, fun to see some high-quality basketball. Yeah, so yeah, for sure. Well, uh, well, that's good. That's cool. You get to go to college games. I, I personally don't get to go to a whole lot of college games um, just because of our schedule. Yeah. You know, we, we usually play, you know, like Saturday afternoon. I'm not going to – an IU game or a Purdue game or anything like that. And it's been, I think I've been coaching almost 20 years now. So you're pretty busy on the weekends. And, and so you kind of miss out on going and getting that experience. But it is super cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, the student sections and the, and the, just the buzz when you walk into the gymnasium. It was a little bit like that last night at, at Northwood, but you crank that up when you go major D1, you know, college basketball. Everybody's crazy, you know, yelling and, and uh, screaming and, and uh, having a good time. And, and it's, a, it's a lot better when your team wins, but it's still a pretty cool experience when you get to go. Um, I, I've read some things online that Purdue, you know, Mackey Arena is as loud as it's ever been. And then you said something about 100, I don't know how loud 122 decimals is, but it's, that's got to be super loud. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like a concert, you know, going on in there. But uh, uh, speaking of college games, I did, I, I talk about, I don't get a chance to go to too many college games. Um, but I did uh, Thursday night. So what is today? Saturday? Just a few yeah. nights ago, I got a chance to go watch a college basketball game. It was Purdue-Fort Wayne. And um, they played, oh gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue, but they played a conference opponent um, and uh, was able to go to that game, which was pretty cool because uh, Keaton Dukes is a, uh, that played for us last year is a, is a walk-on there and uh, doing very well. Uh, involved in the men's basketball program. They've traveled all over the world. Uh, I think they went to Barcelona. They went to the Bahamas. And uh, they get to travel around and do a bunch of cool things. But that uh, Purdue-Fort Wayne won by, I think, a uh, little over 10 points. Oh, they played uh, Green Bay. Mm. And so, um, so anyway, that was a really cool experience for us. Yeah, and Coach, experiences like that, you know, you're taking your – high school kids there and they're seeing all of that so what does that do to them because you know that has to motivate them in a way seeing you know a former teammate out there playing college ball how does that motivate your players yeah I don't know I think we'll find out but I can tell you what uh, uh, Scott Beasley who's one of our volunteer assistant coaches uh, is a alumni of PFW and is involved with their basketball programs probably not probably it is why you know Keaton got a chance to walk on there and uh, it's been an amazing. I talked to Keaton's parents, and um, he's having an amazing experience and doesn't regret one bit going D1, walk on instead of maybe trying, uh, you know, the NAI or D3 route. You know, for him, it's been a great experience. And, and for us, you know, 
um, Coach Beasley had called me and said, hey, you know, do we have any interest in taking the team down to the game? And he's like, I know it's the night before the Northwood game. Uh, I was like, no, nope, we're going. Anything that's fun, we're doing, you know. <laughs> and so we went out to eat. We went to uh, right across the street to a, a guy who owns a restaurant that we know, Casa um, Restauranto or whatever, uh, which is right across from the um, um, uh, the uh, Coliseum. So we got a chance to sit down and have a meal together and and then venture over to the to the Coliseum. And so that was super cool. Uh, we had great seats for the game, PFW won. And here's really interesting story. So they PFW's got a couple guys that are hurt. I'm over there, and I'm watching the game, and we're up. Uh, I say we because now I'm a huge <laughs> PFW fan, right? Okay. We're up 22, okay? And there's eight minutes to go. It was like eight minutes and 32 seconds to go. And I look over to the bench, and I start counting, and I'm going, okay, they're going through. They've got an eight-man rotation, right? And they got two guys hurt. And I'm looking at the other guys that, that are not going to play in the game. And there's five of them. You know what that means? Okay. It's Keaton Dukes' high school basketball team is there. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. If, if, if they can just stay at 20 points, or he's going to get in the game. And I'm thinking maybe that's possible. And so – um, the and, and as it turns out, because we found out afterwards, the assistant coach walks down to Keaton and says, "Hey, as soon as you get in, we're running a set for you to get a three. <laughs> so, <laughs> I did, at the time, I'm thinking he might play. So now Keaton thinks he's going to play, and Green Bay goes on like a 12 nothing run to kind of foil the Wallace C basketball plans of Keaton Dukes coming in. And I will tell you, um, it was my first opportunity to be on the dance cam. <laughs> <laughs> the guy had the guy had the 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 the, um, the camera right. He was ten feet in front of me. Okay, it literally was the dance cam, and I have on underneath my uh, quarter zip, I had on a Keat an authentic game worn Keaton Dukes jersey number twenty four, <laughs> mascadons across my chest, and my plan was somehow find a way to get on the dance cam and embarrass either Keaton. Or as you guys know, I got three boys on the on, on the high school basketball team. I'm gonna embarrass all of them at the exact same time. Coach Everingham on the dance cam. <laughs> Guess what I did? Did it come through? Did you do it? I chickened out. Completely. Oh. <laughs> like, I did. I did. The guys got the camera on me, and I was like, "Oh, here it goes." And uh, I go, and I thought, and I was gonna raise up my shirt and show my Keaton Dukes jersey. And I totally chickened out. I, I just couldn't do it. I figured, you know, the whole dad thing, you know, <laughs> like I was like, they're going to be so embarrassed, dad's on the dance cam. But anyway, so the, the dance cam didn't work out at the PFW game, right? Yeah. Keaton didn't get in the game, but the good news was uh, PFW won. And I will tell you, we got a chance to stay afterwards, and Coach Kaufman, the PFW coach, who's who's a great guy, um, he came out and talked to our team, and, and what he told our team uh, was that uh, Keaton Dukes is representing our community and our basketball program at the highest level. And so um, I got a chance to walk over and, and meet and talk to the athletic director from PFW, and she was singing Keaton's uh, praises as well. Uh, he's also on the honor roll, straight A's, you know, his first semester in college. So uh, great experience for one of our former basketball players, Keaton Dukes, uh, at PFW to be a walk-on, uh, be heavily involved in their best basketball program there, um, and then also doing well uh, in school. So it was a great night all around. Got to watch a college basketball game. It wasn't 122 decibels like Purdue, <laughs> like your Purdue game, but it was pretty cool for us. Yeah, and, you know, PFW is supposed to be able to be toward the top of their conference, yeah. which means they could get a chance to play in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. You know, I, I'm, while we're on the subject, I, I mean, I and I've already said, I mean, Keaton, uh, he by the way, he's getting better. Um, and, and so practicing against those guys and, and being an, a, a part of the scout teams and and the things that he's getting to experience is he's increased his vertical leap uh, by four inches, and I swear he's about an inch taller. He's about 6'3". Um, if he wanted to, now I'm, I don't, I don't want to speak for Keaton, but if he wanted to, he could kind of revisit, you know, playing some college basketball. I'm not sure he'll ever be able to play, you know, at PFW, um, but he certainly would have an opportunity to play elsewhere. But he loves it there, you know, the opportunity to travel the world, 
like I said, they went to uh, Bar- Barcelona um, um, this year already. They went to uh, uh, the Bahamas, and then and then they're at the top of the Horizon League, and that's a that's a huge you know Division One conference, and so you know their ability to compete at a high level, and for Keaton to be a part of that. I'm a, I'm a PFW fan now, okay? <laughs> Coach, around the NLC, I want to talk about some of the rankings. You have Northwood at top who you played last night. They're 2-0 and in the conference. You have Warsaw who you've also played. They're 2-0. and And then an upcoming opponent that you have on the schedule, Mishawaka, they're also 2-0 and in conference play. So what can you say about the NLC conference and how it's shaping out? Yeah, Zach, d- good question because I, d- I don't know anything about Mishawaka. I really don't. I know they got a new coach. Uh, they lost some players, and I was probably expecting them to be maybe around 500. Do you have their record right now? Yeah, they are. Let me guess, 10 and 2. 10 and 2, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, here we go. <laughs> Didn't I mention that earlier? Seems yeah. like everybody we play is 10 and 2. <laughs> what's what's uh, uh, Homestead's record? I think they're like 10 and 1. 10 and 1? Yeah, so what's good. Northwood's record? 10 and 2? Yeah, yeah, 10 and 2. 10 and 2? What what was Woodland's record? 10 and 2? 9 and 1? <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Something like that. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's seriously. Odd. Like, I, it may have actually been ten and two. Yeah, I was about I the time the game was over. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we are, uh, you know, we're facing some high level competition here. I, I keep kind of saying it, but uh, uh, I don't know a whole lot about Mitchell Walk. I really don't. I haven't watched one single game. I've been paying attention to their scores and their record, and and again, I was probably anticipating them being, you know, around the five hundred range, maybe five and five or six and four or whatever. Wouldn't have surprised me, but uh, it does surprise me that they're up there. I, I don't know. I have to pay attention uh, next week. We'll, we'll dig into, you know, who they are on Monday and Tuesday, and we'll be ready for Friday for sure. And we'll have some games under our belt, you know, with Northwood and, and Homestead that are going to – that's not – if you're Mishawaka, that's not who you want to see Wallace playing the week before you play them because they, they know that we're going to gain experiences from that and, and be able to play at a high level. Um, but you know, Concord beat Goshen last night uh, handily. I think they were up maybe 14 in the fourth quarter, uh, and just took care of them from start to finish. And Northridge was at one point, I think, ranked in 4A, up to 10 or 12. You know, and then they go to the holiday tournament. I think they lost three in a row there, and then they they might have lost three of their last four or four in a row. Um, but they're a pretty talented team as well with the Bales boys and. And they got some other athletes that, that are pretty good too. So it's they're going to be formidable opponents in Mishawaka, um, in Northwood or North Ridge, and uh, uh, Goshen's a little bit of a mystery right now. I'm not sure what's going on there, uh, if anything, or if they just ran into a Concord team that played well that night. Um, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, as we move throughout the season and playing those teams. Plymouth um, uh, lost by eight, I think, to Mishawaka uh, last night. And so Plymouth is going to be very competitive. It's the same thing every year. It's year in and year out. You got, you know, even your so-called bottom teams that are certainly capable, you know, of winning basketball games. So it's going to be a fun test, you know, in the NLC as it always is and and something that's going to prepare us for the postseason play. All right. Well, thanks for coming in this morning, Coach. All right. The Warriors will be back in action tonight at Homestead. Zach and I will see you then. That concludes the Coach's Corner Basketball Show this morning on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com.